All right, Mr. Cup, we're about to uh, Tefali in. Uh, you're already facing pretty much east. Mm -hmm. East is this way. Um, Shashimar. Sebastian, Sebastian. All her semi is clear. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Blessed be the name of Yahweh. Turn about Abba Yah for the life that you have blessed us for. Please forgive us for our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquities. And please give us the strength to forgive those who have sinned against us so that we may receive forgiveness for our sins. And I ask that you may continue to bless us and keep us. Told about for safe travels for those who travel from far places to esteem your name. Dang. I ask that you may give us the strength to refrain from all manner of evil. And I ask that you may be pleased with all that we do and all that we say. Yes. And I ask that you may put your word within our hearts so that we will not sin against you with our lips. And I also ask that you may put your word within us so that we will not sin against you with our works. Uh -huh. I want to say Toto for being a righteous Elohim. Yes. Your mercy yes. endures forever and ever. Yes. Toto for not destroying us off the face of this earth. Mm -hmm. I ask that you may give us the strength to endure to the very end. Mm -hmm. And I ask that we all will have a desire to have everlasting life and dwell with you. Yes. I ask that none of us will suffer corruption. And I ask that none of us will cross sides and be a servant to the adversary, but I ask that we will be only service unto you. Yeah, yeah. And I ask that you may remove that spirit of fear, whether it's the fear of being Dang. sick or the fear of what man could do unto us. Yeah. But I ask that you may only give us that righteous fear, which is the fear of you, yeah, and your yeah. power and your word. Yeah. Yeah. And I ask as we go into this lesson, and as we go into praise, Abba, I'm, I'm asking that you may dwell with us. Allow your ruach, your yeah, spirit to yeah, dwell with yeah. us. Yeah. And I also ask that you may allow your word to help assist us get to the kingdom. Yeah, Abba, I ask that no, that no one in this room will suffer corruption. No but I ask that you will give us all an opportunity to seek your face and to repent. For yes. Repent means to turn away. So Abba, I ask that you may give us strength to turn away. Yes. And I ask that we will not make an excuse for our sin. Yes. Yes. For we know that your mercy endures forever and ever. Yes. Yes. It also comes a time where we have to be honest with you and honest with ourselves. Yes. Choose which side we want to serve. And I yeah. ask that we will all choose life and ask that none of us to choose death. Yes, yeah. I ask that you may answer this prayer, this tefla, to yeah. be in your will. And I ask that you may give me strength and give everyone in this room strength to esteem your name. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That your will be done always. Yes. Blessed you are, Yahweh. Blessed yes. is your name, Yahweh. And blessed he yes. that comes in the name of Yahweh and yes. truth. Amen, amen, seller. Amen. See it. Toda Rabah, down for the for the powerful Tefillah. Toda Rabah. Um, welcome, welcome to those that are here for the first time and for uh, the regular Mishpaka. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Um, we're going to move into what we call the language and culture portion, um, where we go through a little bit of, of language, dynamics of language, uh, not necessarily in this setting the breakdowns of the language, like the prefixes, suffixes, uh, infixes, um, um, the qual form. We, we don't really go into that. Um, we do a bit of a reading, and then we kind of break down what we what we read uh, from a more Hebraic um, standpoint, all right? So we'll get started. Um, and like I said, we, we've gone over the language very thoroughly. Um, we've been in this study now, this particular study now, uh, in the language uh, uh, going on about two years. So um, we've talked about the dynamics of language, the purpose of language, um, uh, how language is culturally identifiable. Um, and we talked about how our language um, with all the colloquialisms and the idioms and all of that is uh, attention grabbing. <laughs> You know, and 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 I believe it's a blessing from the Most High that that we can use words in that way to grab attention and hold attention. So that's what we've been going through um, today. I want to kind of bring in another sort of dynamic, um, and and I kind of I kind of stumbled on this a little bit when I was I was searching for um, um, some information on the Hebrew gematria. <laughs> I'm not, you know, I kind of um, gave a kind of 
backed off a little bit on the Gematra, but while I was searching for that, you know, numbers uh, in, in scripture, and while I was searching for that, I came across um, the four levels, the four levels of understanding um, biblical language, right? And we know biblical language is originally Hebrew, right? Hebrew. Um, and so I want to kind of go through that. That's the way I, I study. <laughs> um, and then um, we'll get into some scripture and try and correlate that with the scripture. All right. So um, this level, these levels of uh, understanding biblical language, right? And, and we've talked about it before, but we never really put a put a kind of system to it or a type of title to it right and and there's a well the hebrew word is pardis uh if you look that word up it means orchard but in this instance they're kind of using that p uh, r d uh, s um as a step as a reminder of how um to kind of solidify your understanding i'll put it that way <laughs> okay and so uh, we're just going to briefly go through that and then we're going to get into some scripture um that first p is 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 literal and it, it's the hebrew word is peshat push push and it means surface and 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 a little bit more than just surface is uh straight or in the idea of um not wavy not uh difficult to follow you know not difficult to to walk along that's the idea of the surface the peshat and it's really the literal words what is saying literally right and then the second one is uh, uh the r in parties is um remez remez and it literally means in hebrew veil veil or um kind of uh, hidden, not totally hidden, but veiled, you know, like a veil over your face. You can't really see the, uh, the uh, particulars of the person's face that's wearing that veil, right? And so that's what that, that uh, R in Pardis, the Remez means, veiled, right? And, and really it's uh, hinting to that there may be something there um, that is not readily visible to the eye all right there's something in the words or the uh, verse uh, or the phrase or the song that may not be readily um, seen with the eye that's that's the idea <laughs> right and then we have the Duresh and that literally means in Hebrew is to seek to search uh, to inquire right and so um, the idea is um, what is what is the message behind what I'm reading, and we've talked about it here before. It's like why did the Most High decide uh, that this should be in the Bible? Why is it just for my information? Is it sort of like um, and I don't want to use because the well, why is this particular phrase or verse or passage or parable why is it why is it here why did the most high make sure that it was preserved for future generations right that's that direct to 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 seek out right and then that final is sowed so and it, and it literally means um hidden or, or um, hidden or, or uh, in mystery. You know how we see dark sayings? That's what it's talking about, the dark sayings, the, uh, the things that are really um, a blessing from the most high when we get it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and so um, sometimes, in this sowed, when we get to that fourth level of uh, understanding 
biblical language, sold is not easily attained. I'll put it that way. It's not easily attained. Um, but when we do think we have that sowed understanding that this dark saying has been revealed to me, um, we have to check it against the Peshat, okay, the literal. Does it change what I understand on the literal level? And if it does, if it doesn't agree with that literal level, then maybe you haven't um, attained the sowed, right? And then sometimes, like if you read something in, in better sheet and you, you, you're kind of not uh, totally understanding, but then by the time I get to Deborine, it might be talking about the same thing or similar what I was reading in, in better sheet. And then it's, aha, now I understand. Now I understand. So I check it and say, well, a tree is a tree, but what does a tree um, kind of represent? You know, the, the, it's, it's tough, it's strong, has, it has strong roots and it produces fruit, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. And we know our language is that way. We don't look, Hebraic thought is not always, is not primarily what does something look like. Initially, Hebraic thought is what does it do? <laughs> what is its function? And then, you know, what does it look like? All right. So when we see like tree and, and, and stuff like that on the literal level, we're talking about a tree. But then to the Hebraic thought, what is the purpose of a tree? What does a tree do? You know, and that's how Hebraic thought is. Um, and remember, the key thing is that 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 so level when you think you've um, that a dark saying has been revealed that you do check it against that push shot that literal level and does it does it does it say something different than what that literal saying is and if it does then maybe you have to go a few more chapters you have to pray to the most high for understanding and then you get the you know in season sometimes it's not your season to get that so you know sometimes it's not your season to get that so all right so moving on so let me get a sip of water Moving on, we're going to get into some scripture with this um, levels of study to get the understanding of biblical language. And really, we're talking Hebraic Hebrew language. All right, so let's go to um, 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel in the English, chapter 21. First Samuel, and we went through this last night, um, <laughs> um, a different aspect of First Samuel, but we talked about this last night in our Shishi study, in our, in our Friday uh, night study, our um, Torah uh, study. But something was said during that study that sparked a, uh, an interest for today, to be a part of today's lesson. All right, so we're at... Uh, First Samuel, or First Samuel in the English, chapter 21, and we're going to read verses one through six. And what we normally do is we call up our Talmudina, greet our Hebrew language students to read. All right, and so this is the section for them. And first is um, a Koti Talia. First Samuel, 21. Starting at verse one. Can we hit the tools? And then go to and automatically went to NL in there. All right. You good with that? Mm -hmm. She stuck out. Mm -hmm. Can you um uh -huh. all right. Is that gonna cause any echo or anything like that? Okay. Toda, when you're ready. We're at uh, 1 Samuel, Samuel Akhad, uh, chapter 21, and we're going to start at verse 1. Mm -hmm.
Wayavur, Rawid, Noba, Nobe, Al, Ash. It's chapter one. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Verse one. Okay. That's my idea. Wayavur, Bo, Dawid, Wadawa. Nava Al Aki Malek Ha Ko Han Akohan That's it. Hey. Akohan. Hold on. Waya Karad Aki Malek Lek Lek Laat. Leak. 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 Okay, leak. Raat. Da. Weed. Wahomar. Lo. Madoa. Aka. All right. Next line. La. Bodek. Weish. Ain. Ekad. Et, 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 et. Right, and so if we go back to the first word on that line, what is that final um, cough there? How do we say that? The first line? Mm -hmm. The first word? The first word in this line, this yeah. last line. La ba de what? You see what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Le, okay. Le ba de ka. All right. Next, um, Bati Batzion, are you on? Kane, can you hear me? Kane, can y'all hear? Can you hear me? Uh, verse two, Bab Kisha, please. Okay. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Okay, verse two. <laughs> verse two. Wayomer David la Akimelek ha kohen ha melek zivuani zivuani davar vayomer ela ish al yadai yadai me umar le me u ma um, et hadavar asher anoki shulek shulekaka shulekaka wa asher zivitika the et han arim ha anrim odai odaiti el uh, mek mekum pelini pelini almoni hallelujah toda toda for you read toda toda all right a couple more um next up is aki nathan verse three all right, wait, verse three. What well, I tell my yes, you, you good? Ta 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 ka ta ka. Yeah, the Daka. Yetka. 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 Yeah, you good. Yetka. Mm hmm. Kam, kami, kam, so, kamis, kamisha. Le, le, ken, ta, tana. By a D or what's that? Oh, there you go. 
Still. Hun honey, honey, ma, ma. What's that? What's that? Yeah, what's that under it? Um, sure. All right. So how is that? Han honey, 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 sa. All right, Toda, <laughs> Toda, good job, good job, and 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 um, this is their first time reading through this this uh, chapter and this verse uh, in the Ibri, you know, um, kind of taking them a little bit out of their comfort zone. <laughs> All right, um, next is uh, verse four, Akoti Zamiria. We're gonna go down to verse six, and then we'll get into it. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Can I be heard online? Can y'all hear uh, Koti Zamiri? Kane. Kane. Yeah. Toda. Waya an ha kohen et Dawid waya mer ain let lechem el takat yadi. All right, you missed one, right? Miss one. You missed one. Oh. Right before the owl. Cole. There you go. El Sakat Yadi He In Lekem Kodesh Ye In Mishmaru Ha'arim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um verse five. Uh I don't knock yeah, you want to read? Verse five? You wanna read verse five? <laughs> Come on down. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, you took the long version of me. <laughs> we got it up up here. You're going to have to use the mic up here, too. Oh. Okay, you're going to have to come up here anyway for the mic. I got it pulled up up here. Uh, five. It's actually six on the screen. You can see it right on here. It's actually verse six on that one. Right. On here. On that one. Yeah. All right. Why you on? That we? It? Akohain? Wyomir, Lo, Ki In, Kisha, Atura, Atura, mm -hmm. Lenu, Kitmo, Mm. Yeah. She was seen. Mm -hmm. But eight total. Why? 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 Who? Kali. Mm -hmm. Anna. Han. Arim. Kodesh. Wahoo. Derek, mm -hmm. Cole, Waap, He, Ayon, Yak Dash, Yak Dash, Yik, Yik Dash. There you go. Okay, Kelly. Hallelujah. Toda, Toda. <laughs> Toda for that read. Told me up. He probably want to ring my neck, but that's <laughs> all right. In the last verse six, uh, Koti Shikwan. Yes, Babasha. 
you know, in some versions, um, what you're seeing is verse six will be verse seven. What we're seeing in the KJV is verse six, and some other versions it'll be verse seven. All right, if you're following along in a different version. You want to use this? Yeah. Yeah. It's seven in here. It's seven. Okay. Can I be heard? Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. You got this. Okay. Why you ten? No. Habo. Habo hain. Kodesh. He lo haya 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 shame lekem sham sham lekem he im lekem hakanim hamo hamo sarim. Milafi, Milafi, Li, Li, Nay, Yahawa, Good job. La Show, La Kim, La, go back to this one, La what? Oh, La Show, La Som, Come back to that. <laughs> Bayom <clears throat> Hila Hila oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You did all right. You did a Tokyo job. You just pay attention to those uh, 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 Nakuj. You know, you did a Tokyo job. Uh, Toda, Toda, but, but uh, that's as far as we're going to read today in the in the Ebrie. Okay, so now let's let's go to. Um, Let's go to it in English. Um, all right, back up to verse one. You might have to do that, man. This is a, <laughs> this an iPhone too? I mean, a, a, a app? No, it's, it's okay. a touch screen. So yeah. Okay, so we're back up to uh, verse one and we're gonna read it in English. It says, then came Dawid to Nob to uh, Achimelech the priest, the Kohen. And Achimelech was afraid at the meeting of Dawid and said unto him, Why art thou alone and no man with thee? And Dawid said unto Achimelech the, the priest, The king hath commanded me a business and hath said unto me, Let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee. And what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. So he's he's saying, uh, yeah, my king sent me to you. Being a little deceptive, sent me to you uh, for some business. And don't tell nobody about, about this business, right? And so verse 3, it says, Now therefore, uh, what is under thine hand, give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what there is present, right? Um, can you go down to verse 4 through 6? All right, so now we're at verse four. And the priest answered Dawid and said, there is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And Dawid answered uh, the priest and said unto him, of a truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out and the vessels of the young men are set apart. And the bread is in and the bread is in a manner common, yeah, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. Verse 6, so the priest gave him hallowed bread, for there was no bread there but the showbread. That was taken from before Yah to put hot bread in the day when it was taken away. All right. Uh, a lot said there, <laughs> right? And so when we go to the Peshat, Right when we when we look at the literal translation there, what we can see is Dawid really. I mean, y'all know the backstory, right? He's he's on the run. Uh, King Saul is trying to kill him, right? And and King Saul has um, 
his men really searching for Dawid. And, and um, so Dawid is on the run. <laughs> and so um, what's going on here is he came to the house of the Most High, right? Yah's house, seeking food. He's hungry. He's, he's, he's starving, right? To, to eat. <laughs> That's what's going on in the surface, right? And then the priest is saying, well, the only thing I got here uh, is the showbread. It's set apart. And you're not, if you, you're not supposed to have it, you're not, you're not a, a Levite, you're not a priest, you're not supposed to have it, I'm not supposed to give it to you, right? And, and uh, he said, if you and your companions are not defiled right now, right, then I'll go ahead and give you the bread, I'll go ahead and give you something to eat, right? So that's literally what's going on, and, and that we... Uh, ate the bread, right? That's on the literal surface, right? Is that all we should take away from that? Is that all we should take away from that? And if it, if it is, if that's what you take away from it, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. The 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 surface level, the literal, we can still see that Dawid is running for his life. He's hungry, and he goes to the house of Yah to eat in peace <laughs> really you know what i mean i really i shouldn't have to worry about being slaughtered in yah's house and, and i know i can get something to eat there's bread there right that's on the literal surface right and so why does the most high want us to know that what why, why does the most high want us to know that why does the writer of this book want us to know that is it just so we know <laughs> what Dawid went through <laughs> you know what i mean is it just so we can see what Dawid went through? Or is there a lesson in that? Is there a lesson in that? And if we say, I wonder what that lesson is for me. Is there a message in there for me? That Duresh, that seeking out. Is there something there for me that, that, that maybe I'm not seeing with the, with the naked eye? You know, Maurice Samak tells us all the time, man, really try to see what's behind the words on the page, right? Try to see what's behind the words on the page. And so that's what this Duresh kind of level is. And like I said, when, uh, when, when, I, when I searched this out and, and kind of reading through it, I'm like, well, I'm pretty much, this is the way I study, right? This is pretty much the way I study. But then that's, that, that um, 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 Duresh and, and the Sod level just kind of, put a title on that aha moment, <laughs> you know what I mean? Now I understand what that aha moment is, is that something has been revealed, right? Something has been revealed, a lesson. I've learned, I've gained a lesson from it. And, and my lesson, really it should be the lesson for everybody, but, but um, it might impact me differently than it impacts you, but it's saying the same lesson. You understand what I'm saying? That's, that's the, uh, the, Duresh, and then when we get to that sowed, right? That sowed level, I think for, well, for me, I'll just go for me, is that if I'm trying to evade my enemies, the adversary, and I'm getting kind of worn out, I'm getting kind of beat down, if I can get to the house of Yah, if I can get to the house of Yah, I know I can be fed. I know I can be safe, and I know I can be fed. And the Kohen's lips should keep the truth, right? And, and I should seek that from the Kohen's mouth, right? Right? And, and I know, like I said, later on when I read that the Most High's words is the bread of life, then it's like, ha! <laughs> that's what the message is that, that I'm supposed to receive. Or at least that's the message that I got. You know what I mean? But even when I go back to the literal, it's still that bread is there in the house. I'm safe in the house. The Kohen is the one that's that's got the bread. It doesn't change anything. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. That was that was kind of quick. <laughs> and before I transition into the cultural portion, which will be fairly quick also, <laughs> before I transition, anybody got any comment or any question about what we just went over those? those kind of four levels. And if you think about it, most of us are already studying in that kind of format, that level, right? 
Because we read it and we try and understand what it's saying literal. And then it's like, ah, there might be something more here. <laughs> you know what I mean? There might be something more here. And, and, and then we kind of say like, well, what is it? How is this going to benefit me? How is this? If, if there's something else here, what is the benefit for me? What, is my, what am I going to get from that? And then seeking out, taking, trying to be able to pull that veil up so I can see the detail of your face, you know? Um, um, and then if I can get the detail of your face, if I, can, if I can get beyond that veil and see the detail of your face, you know, then that's your face was revealed to me. The, the lesson was revealed to me. It's no longer, um, and maybe I understand, or I wonder what it's really saying, you know what I mean? And then sometimes it's, it's just that. <laughs> sometimes it's just that. You know, the most high separated the water from, from, from the land. You know, maybe that's just it. You know what I mean? And so when I say, if we stop at that literal, that Peshat, we really still can still gain from it. We can gain from the literal, you know? You say you had a question, Akoti? Yeah. Just going to the four level. So when we get to like, that we get to that level understand our great side. And it's two people, right? Again, to this level, what, should we come to the same understanding of what the head message is, or should we? I'm not sure. What it is. If I understand your question, and what what Akoti uh, is asking is, if there's two people reading the same verse, and we kind of going through these levels, should we both end up with the same message, right? Yeah. And 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 my answer to that is, you should end up with the same understanding you should end up with the same understanding that Dawid is on his way to he's running for his life he's on his way to the house of Yah to be fed right you, you should understand that but to me it's like man I've been going through so much hallelujah most high if I can just get to the most high's house I can be strengthened I can be fed in safety <laughs> from an experience someone who is supposed to keep the truth Who's supposed to um, um, bake that bread? Someone who has the ingredients for that bread. You understand what I'm saying? And you might not see it that way, but you understand that Dawid is getting to this house, the Most High's house, to be fed. You know? You understand what I'm saying? But based on your experiences, you might have a different um, impact. You know what I mean? Where somebody else is like, okay. It's confirmed to me. That's where I need to be. You know, it's Todaya. It's confirmed to me through what I just read. That's where I need to be at the Most High's house, eating the Most High's bread. <laughs> you know what I mean? Any other question or comment? Okay, okay. And to your question, um, sister, uh, that was a very good question. So you know how we always say the saying that we love it when a plan comes together. It's because when you home studying on your own, you were reading something, and y'all say. Oh, you went into what I was just studying last night. And I just studied that. And then your understanding now lines up with what he just said. The understanding should be the same. But like he said, the impact, you know, where you are in your walk in your life, how you apply it may be somewhat different, but it's the same understanding. So that's why when we say, I love when the plan come together, we're like, you said what I, I just read that last night myself, you know? And we wasn't even together, same scripture. And that's the conclusion that I came to, same understanding. Because the word of y'all is not any private interpretation. Okay. And so all these different ways that we're doing things, that's man. And Shatan and not Yah. It's supposed to be a literal, and then from that literal, how do we apply it to our life? And people are not taking the literal part and making it <laughs> not literal. And so now the interpretation is now all over the place. So I yield. Hold up, Toda. Toda, Toda, Moray. Toda. Does that, that help? That answer? Yes. Yeah, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so just to kind of recap, right? That, that first is the literal, right? Um, there's a hand. Oh, Adon Mikiel, sleek I didn't see. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> in my note. Okay. Shalom, shalom, family. So I'm just trying to get an understanding. So, okay, I'm, I'm seeing the literal part that you're talking about, and I'm just kind of like looking at this part where David is telling the priest that he's sent by the king, which is not true because he's on the run. Am I correct so far? Well, I mean, you can look at it too. What king is he talking about? Is he talking about the most high? Or is he talking about a literal king? 
Okay. Okay. So in that I the king, is this a lie or not? I guess that's what I'm trying to I'm trying to get here. Is he because I'm like, okay, if he's is is this we I'm I'm I know that it's not like acceptable to lie, but I'm like, well, how right. is this? And I'm just trying to understand it. You know, I'm like, right. Is this acceptable? Is this I understand not acceptable? And, and and there's a long, we could go in a long, drawn out answer. So this is what I would suggest. Uh, keep that question, uh, bring that question back up at the 6.30. At the 6.30, when we come back on and we can address that, that specific Kane. question, is that sinful what he did? <laughs> That's what I'm okay, going to say. question is. Yes, yes, yes. Right. Just for me Toda. to get, have a clear understanding. Okay, Kane. Toda, Toda for the question. Um, I'm, I'm going to move on to the cultural, uh, to stay in my time slot. Uh, cultural is going to be pretty short, and and for for those that are are, are visiting, um, we normally go into a, how does these scriptures? We know Torah is our culture. We know Torah is our culture, right? Um, and so what we do is we try and go into the the language and see the cultural aspects behind it, right? As a people, how how does how does these words that we read and understand? How does it how does it affect us as a people as a culture right not as well I put it that way how does this how does this apply to the culture how does it affect the, the culture right the, the the Torah is a way of life is is the way of life and the most high commanded and trained Israel in this way of life right and so that's what we try and do is relate uh the scriptures to how it impacts how it affects um our culture are we walking it out are we living it the way um the most high intended for us so today i want to I, I just want to read a couple of passages and and we sometimes will read the passage and then the following shabbat depending on the time we go in and start to break it down all right so today we're going to go to um the book of shoftim judges right and we're going to read um First, we're going to start off in eight. Let's go to eight, uh, verse 22. Shofatim eight, starting at verse 22. And this is just for like a little background or, or context of where we're going in verse in chapter nine. All right. Uh, what did I say? Shofatim. All right, so we're at uh, Shoftim chapter 8, and we're going to read verses uh, 22 through 27. You there? 22 to 28. All right, uh, starting at verse 22, and it reads, Then the men of Israel uh, said unto Gideon, Rule thou over us, both thou and thy sons, and thy sons' sons also, for thou hast delivered us from the hand of Midian. Verse 23, and Gideon said unto them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my sons rule over you. Yah shall rule over you, right? And, and verse 24, and Gideon said unto them, I would desire a request of you, that ye would give me every man the earrings of his prey, for they had golden earrings because they were Ishmaelites, right? Verse 25, and they answered, we will willingly give them. And they spread a garment and did cast therein every man the earrings of his prey. And the weight of the gold of the golden earrings that he requested uh, was a thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold. Besides ornaments and collars and purple raiment that was on the kings of the Midians. And besides the chains that were about their camel's necks. Here's the point, verse 27. And Gideon made an ephod thereof and put it in his city, even in Ophrah. And also Yisrael, Yis, and also Yisrael went thither a whoring after it, which thing became a snare unto Gideon and his house. All right, let's jump over to verse uh, chapter 9. 
and we're going to read uh well for the homework read the whole chapter read the whole chapter but we're going to focus in on verses 9 through uh verses 7 through 15 of chapter 9 so we're in chapter 9 and i'm just going to read 7 through 15 today but but you need to read the whole chapter <laughs> all right so we're at chauffeur team or judges chapter 9 starting at verse 7. all right and when they told it to jotham he went and stood in the top of mount gerizim and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them hearken unto me ye men of shechem that the most high may hearken unto you the trees went forth as at the trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, reign thou over us. At verse nine, but the olive tree said unto them, should I leave my fatness wherewith by me thy honor the most high and man and go to be promoted over the trees. Verse 10, and the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. But the fig tree said unto them, should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? Then said the trees unto the vine, come thou and reign over us. And the vine said unto them, should I leave my vine which cheereth the most high and man and go to be promoted over the trees? 14, then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. We're going to stop right there. <laughs> We're going to focus in on that passage right there next Shabbat. So, so. Uh, from from this Shabbat to next Shabbat, read the whole chapter, verse nine. Go back to the to passage in verse eight, and then we're going to discuss it. We're going to discuss it next Shabbat. All right. I pray that this lesson, uh, this uh, lesson has been um, edifying, um, and at least provoke some thought. You know, at least provoke some thought either confirm some things that you already understood or, or kind of make you say, you know what, let me go back and, <laughs> and look at this thing again. You know what I mean? Um, hello, yeah? Wow. 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 John, I just want to say that that, that time I'm going into the house of bread, <laughs> to the house of the most high, receiving the bread from the priest and uh, receiving from the mouth of the priest and you look forward to running into Shabbat and going there, praise the most high. That was uh, yeah. inspiring. Hallelujah. 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 This time we give the floor to Don Kanakya for his two minute warning. Uh, <laughs> 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 